Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, it's time to double our pleasure. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. And welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. I really do appreciate the support that you guys show to me day in and day out. You could be anywhere else, doing anything else, but you're choosing to be here. So thank you so very much. Y'all, today we are going to double our pleasure by making these adorable boxed double chunks. What in the heck is a double chunk? I'll show you in just a minute. But y'all know what time it is, it's time to make it. So here's a closer look at the box that holds my wonderful double chunks. When finished, it measures six and a half by four and a half, and it's one and three eighths of an inch deep. Beautiful, beautiful box, easy to make. And when we open it, you can see how this looks from the top, very well coordinated. Take this out. And y'all, here is our double chunk. And on the front, I added a pocket. And in that pocket, I tucked some pieces of ephemera. Now, you don't have to put a pocket on yours, but I just thought it was cute. So here is my double chunk. When I open it, I have two of these chunky notepads back to back. Look how beautifully that closes. Everything is so nicely coordinated and so easy so this makes a great craft fair item or it makes a great Christmas gift item. Just simply swap the papers out for a non-Christmas paper and give it as a Christmas gift and that way it can be used all year long or whenever that person needs to use it, not just at Christmas. But if you are doing an early season Christmas fair, this would make a great addition to your table. So then I made two more. I have a pocket on this one and no pocket on this one, but they are both just so beautiful and so easy to make. Don't you just love these double chunks? They are so easy to make, and here's what we're going to need to make them. So to make the double chunks, I am using two of my Dollar Tree notepads that measure four by six. You don't have to get your notepads from the Dollar Tree. They don't even have to be four by six. Just tweak the measurements in this video to accommodate whatever sizes you're working with. So we have two of these four by sixes, and then this will be a chipboard project and I will be mixing medium weight and heavy weight. So for the actual double chunk jacket, I will be using my medium weight chipboard and I have two pieces that are cut at four and one eighth by six and an eighth. And then I have one piece that is one and one eighth by six and one eighth. Those are the pieces for the jacket. Then for the box itself, I'm going to be using a lightweight chipboard and that's the consistency of one cereal box. I have two pieces that are four and three quarters by one and a half. I have one piece that is six by five and a half and I have one piece that is ten and three eighths by six and a half. And then I will be using the Starry Night collection from Kayser Craft. And if you're looking for the papers in this collection, I have two. The SKU for this sheet is 834-1624-821. And the SKU for this sheet is 834-1624-820. And again, it's the Starry Night Collection from Kaisercraft. So I have two pieces that are cut at three by four. I have two pieces that are cut at five by four. I have two scrap pieces, and these pieces are approximately eight by six. I have two pieces that are four by 10. I have one piece that is nine and a half by five and seven eighths. And then I have one piece that is eight and a half by 12. So we're going to start with the piece that measures eight and a half by 12. And you can see that it's a double-sided paper and both sides are beautiful. But I am going to go with the cream color for the outside. So I have already added double stick tape to my pieces. And I have my two pieces that measure four and one eighth by six and an eighth, and the spine piece that measures one and an eighth by six and an eighth. So I am just going to remove that tape backer. We are going to give this about an eighth of an inch in spacing when we place it down. And 
again, we're going to remove the tape backer from this piece. And we're going to place it down, giving ourselves about an eighth of an inch in spacing. Then I'm just going to trim away my excess paper. So let's take our stylus, press it against the chipboard, and then press down into the paper just to create a score. And I'll go all the way around doing this. And I'll even go on the inside and do it. And now I'm going to flip it over to make sure I have everything nice and stuck. Then we can stand it up and just train that paper to want to fold. I am going to use my finger blade just to go in and miter those edges. Then I'm just going to use my tape runner because this will be sandwiched so this will hold and I am just placing tape on my fold over pieces. And then we can just fold over and I'll go back and make sure that everything is nice and stuck. Make sure I have a good stick in the spine area. And there is my double chunk sweet jacket. So cute. Now we're going to take our liner piece and we're going to place it on the inside just like this. But before we do, we need to place down some tape. So I am going to start out using my one and a half inch tape. We'll get that placed. So we're trying to cover that chipboard so that we don't have too many non-covered spaces going. And then I'm just going to squeeze this little piece right in there. And I'm going to set this to the side for just a minute. And we're going to take our liner piece and we're going to place liner around the outer perimeter on all four sides. You can use glue for this if you want. I'm just using my tape because it's what's out. Guys, how hot is it where you are? It is sweltering today. It's already starting out to be a very hot one. It's been so hot, that we have had storms every night since the 4th of July. So let's get this nice and stuck. We are going to peel away the tape backer from both the liner piece as well as the jacket. And then y'all for this part I'm going to stand because I want to place my liner and I want to get it down as even as possible. And I have found that when I'm standing, I tend to get better placement. So there, my beautiful liner is down. I'm going to get everything nice and stuck. Then we're going to go in, make sure that we have good spine definition. Just get in there and work that spine. Take your book and look at it to make sure that you don't have any paper puckering in those corners. And I don't, 
So this book is good to go. So now I'm going to bring in my Zyron sticker maker and it is the Creative Station. It is the one that applies adhesive up to nine inches. And all you do is you place the pieces on the tray, you turn the wheel, the pieces will come out the back side. I'm going to go ahead and do these two pieces as well. And it comes with its own trimmer, so I have trimmed away. And now I'm just going to flip this over to make sure I have good stick. And I peeled away the protective sheet on the top. It's just a clear plastic. And now we're simply going to take our four by five inch piece. And the way that I'm doing mine is I'm placing it at the bottom. And then I'm going up like that. Isn't that pretty? going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to start at the bottom and what I do is I start in a corner trying to get that corner nice and even. Then I can even on the sides and on the bottom and we bring it up. And if I have any hanging over I can just take my finger blade and go down the side and I think that those are already beautiful. But now we're going to go ahead and add our three by four toppers. So I am going to take these and where you place it is completely up to you, but I want to place mine down about an inch and a half from the top. Then I'm just going to get this stuff because I already have my adhesive on it. So I just need to go in and just work on getting it nice and stuck. And there, y'all, isn't that lovely? And y'all, it is so easy to take these little notebooks and dress them up and make them look like this. So what I'm doing is I'm going to place these side by side because I want to try to get my placement here to match this placement here. So let's go ahead, get that stuck, fold over and fold over to the back. And so there are my two easy, beautiful, chunky books. So now we can take this and we can just place it on the inside like that and I am placing mine to be a one and done. If you want yours to be anything different from what I'm doing here you'll have to tweak it because I am making this a one and done. So I'm going to place some glue on the back and the reason why I'm making mine a one and done is because I do have two notepads in here and by the time you get through the two of these Y'all, this is not going to look as fresh and as neat as it looks right now. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my notepad, I'm going to put it in, and I want to try to get it as close to the spine as possible. So before that glue hardens, I'm just going to slide it over like that. Then I can take my big old spatula, go in and get that stuck. And then we're going to place some glue on this one. And I'm going to place that down right here, not sticking it permanently yet. And I'm going to match it to this one. And it looks like I have a really good match. So now I can just open this and get it stuck. And so y'all, there we have our sweet double chunk book. Look at how cute that is and how easy it actually opens. We're going to go ahead and make the box and then I'll decide whether or not I want to add any decorative elements to this. So we're going to take that lightweight piece of chipboard and we're going to place it in on the 10 and 3 8 inch side. Let's score at four and a half.
and we're going to rotate it to the opposite 10 and 3 8 inch side and score at four and a half. And I'm giving myself a pretty good score. So now we're just going to take this and we're just going to fold it. And it's easier to do this with a lightweight chipboard than a medium weight. So now I'm going to peel away my tape backers. And we're going to bring in that second 8 by 12 inch piece. So now I'm just going to take the box body and place it down. Use my big old spatula to get it nice and stuck. And then we're just going to go around with that stylus like we did earlier. And then we'll miter that edge. Now we can stand this up and train it to fold. And I'm going to take my tape runner and we're going to add some tape to these pieces. And we'll just stand this up, fold over like this, and we'll get this stuck. Let's just get everything nice and stuck. And now I can take the box and we can just do it like this and get it ready to accept the liner piece, which I also forgot to mention. So we need a liner piece that measures six and a quarter by 10 and one eighth. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the double chunk jacket. We're just going to place down some tape to cover this piece. Y'all, sorry I forgot to mention those two things. I don't know how they just got away from me. So we're just going to place this down like that. Then again, I'm going to place my tape around the perimeter on all four sides. So now I'll bring in the body of my box. We'll make sure that tape is nice and stuck before we peel off the backer sheets. So I'm peeling up the backer from the box. And then I'm going to stand so that I can get my placement. And we're just going to take this piece, put it down like this, and I'll go over it with my big old spatula to make sure that I have everything nice and stuck. We'll go back in. And again, we're going to work those spines. And work it over here as well. All right, so then I'm going to bring in the two pieces that measure four and three quarters by one and a half. And I'm just going to place that down. And I'm just going to put that down, trim, and cut at an angle, trim away the bottom, and trim, and then cut at an angle. And now I'm just going to add some glue because that's what's out. Let's go ahead and get this stuck by folding it over and placing it down like that. And then I'll trim away the excess.
then we'll bring in that second piece and the piece that measures four by 10. Lay it down and then cut at an angle. Trim this away. And then cut at an angle. And we are going to place our glue. Take this piece and fold it over just like we did that first one. Get it nice and stuck. And then we're simply going to trim away the excess. And now we're going to take our glue, place some glue along the three raw edges of the chipboard. Like this. And then we're going to place it in our box. So I'm going to take my box, take this piece, place it inside like that, and then we'll bring this side up like this. And then we're going to press down and squeeze in. And your side is going to look like that. We need to give this just a moment to dry. You can take your big old spatula, whatever it is you're using, and just go over that to help that stick. I'm going to take one of my books and just place it on the top. And I'm going to go ahead and just place my glue on this piece. And just like on the other side, we're going to take this piece and just slide it in. And I went in about an eighth of an inch on the side and I'm going to put it in and bring up the side on both ends. So my side is going to look like this and we'll give this a chance to dry before we place our books. But I am going to go ahead and just place one of the books on top to hold that so that it will dry. All right, y'all, so things probably look a little bit different, and they are. I have very noisy neighbors, very noisy neighbors. So I set up an alternative filming station in my studio, and that's where I am right now. So from time to time, you'll see this background, and you'll see my old background. So hopefully it's not too confusing. We're still working on the same project, just needed to make a quick move. So now we're going to make the lid for the box. So I have my piece in that measures six and five eighths by five and a half, and we're going to score at one and a half and at three and one eighth. I already have my double stick tape on the back, so we're going to bring in those two scraps, and they're approximately eight by six, and we are going to cover our lid and hopefully you can't hear my little air conditioner running in the background I do have it turned on because it helps to filter out some of the noise coming from next door and it's very hot so I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to place it down like this then I'm going to trim out my excess and so now I need to take some tape and place some tape on the back side All right, so now that we have our tape on the back side, I am going to go ahead and make sure that it's nice and stuck. Then we'll peel away the tape backer. 
Then we're going to take this piece and do it just like we did the other piece. We're going to place it down. I'll use my finger blade. We're going to go in and just trim out this excess. Make sure I have that nice and stuck. And then we're just going to find our spines. And then we'll just kind of bend it. Getting that bend the way that we want it. And for me, I want to have a rounded end on mine. So I am just going to take my scissors and round just a little bit. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back side, which is the side that we scored at one and a half, and I am going to add some glue. But I am not going to place that glue all the way up to the score mark. I'm actually going to place it about halfway up. So hopefully you're able to see that glue that I have on there. I am going to take this and we're just going to put it on. Like that then I'm going to open it and I'll use my big old spatula to go on the inside and get this nice and stuck and now you're able to see what a beautifully coordinated box we have when we fold over this is the look we have when we open it we have that continuous look from here to here so I am going to take my double chunks and place them on the inside and you're able to see that they fit beautifully so I am going to find a nice little closure for this and some embellishments for those books and I'll be right back all right my lovely so I have some embellishment pieces that I am just going to place down right there and right and right there keeping it very simple very muted I really don't want anything to take away from the beauty of the paper so I am going to take this one and place it right there and then I'm going to take the Merry Christmas and place it over here. How stinking cute is that? So I'm going to fold over and then here on the front I am going to use some of these stickers that I got from Pop Shelf last year at 70% off. The price at the time that I bought them was only $2, so I got 70% off of that $2. It was a wonderful, wonderful find. So I am just going to take this one. I'm not even going to add anything else to it. This one says, all I want for Christmas is you. And y'all, how cute is this double chunk? I think it is so adorable. We're going to go ahead and finish off this box. So I have these pieces. And I know I'm going to put that right there because I like the way that pops. But I haven't decided if I want to put Have a Very Merry Christmas or... Wishing you Christmas joy. Which one do you guys think? I'm thinking I'm going to stay with this green so I have that nice flow of green going all the way around. So I'm going to take this, peel away that backer, and we're going to put this right on top of that one. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of glue, place that glue right there, fold over, and get that stuck right there. Then I'm going to take my Velcro dot, and we're going to stick it right there. And I'm going to peel away, fold over, get that nice and stuck.
lift up, make sure that my Velcro dot is nice and stuck. Go on the inside here, get that nice and stuck. And so y'all, we did that thing. Look at how beautiful our double chunk is and how beautifully coordinated it is. And then we can take it, place it in our box, and now we have a beautiful, beautiful set that we can gift, keep, or sell. It's okay to make beautiful things like this for you and for you only. You don't have to give it away. You don't have to sell it. If you want to make it because it's pretty and you want to have this pretty out in your house, go ahead and make it. So I have brought the other box back in and these are just gorgeous. If you don't like having the raw edge that we have right here, you can go around the edge with a paint marker or with an ink pad. You can go around this one with gold and I would go with gold because I'd be picking out the gold that's shimmering right here. Completely up to you. I'm okay with how that looks because all of this just looks nice and natural. So did we double our pleasure today? I hope that we did. And if you think that we did, don't be shy. Leave me a comment below letting me know that you enjoyed today's project. And I hope that you did enjoy today's project. And if you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.